Vampire on Titus, 1993. This is Guided by Voice's first proper album with a real label, Scat Records, following the Grand Hour EP that they also put out on Scat. The recording of this one was pretty weird. Bob was working with a skeleton crew of just himself, his brother Jimmy, who had worked on a lot of Guided by Voice's stuff with him all the way back to the early 80s, and Tobin Sprout, who at this point is a familiar face in the GBV world. The recordings on the record are split between Steve Wilbur's 8-track studio and Tobin's 4-track. Rather than playing it safe and delivering something propeller-like to appease the label and fans, Guided by Voices instead put together one of the strangest albums of their career. It's darker, it's very lo-fi, but in a different way, and it's often pretty eerie. Wished I Was a Giant opens things off, and Wished I Was a Giant was actually the nickname of someone Bob knew. So many of his songs have references to his friends and their weird nicknames. Bob's vocals are buried in a ton of reverb. Uh, legend has it that Bob was fed up of trying to get things engineered perfectly, and so he just cranked up all the faders on Steve Wilbur's mixing console 10. Um, all the 8-track recordings on this album are have this really super reverb-heavy sound and sound very distant. Um, on some of these tracks, Bob actually plays all the instruments, which is something that wouldn't happen again for a long time. Number two in the Model Home series is a perfect example of the type of four-track songs that are on this. It's a Tobin Sprout instrumental that Bob added lyrics and vocals to later. This was kind of how the two worked together and how they wrote most of their songs together. Donkey School is a strange and somber Tobin Sprout song with a lot of tape hiss and a drone that I think is guitar feedback, but could possibly be something else. But if I had to bet, it'd be, it'd be Jimmy doing feedback. He did a lot of guitar feedback. Um... Dusted is a melodic rocker, and there's actually an alternate version on the Fast Japanese Spin Cycle EP. That EP also has an alternate version of Marchers in Orange, another track from this record. Though, I like the weird chord organ version on this record better, because it's pretty far outside of what GBV would typically do. It's kind of outside their normal sonic territory. I would say that from this whole record, Jar of Cardinals, Wondering Boy Poet, and Non-Absorbing are the three most popular fan favorites. Uh, they're all very catchy. Uh, Non-Absorbing got included in the Greatest Hits compilation. So yeah, this is the weirdest and noisiest Guided by Voices record. It's very divisive. It's one of my favorites. There's a lot of short songs in here. There's a lot of tape hiss, a lot of weird noises. I personally put it up there with Propeller and B-1000 as one of my favorite Guided by Voices records. And how much you like this one will probably depend on how much you like weird and sometimes abrasively lo-fi records. Uh, if that's your vibe, then you'll probably like Vampire and Titus. We're about to head into 1994, where Guided by Voices put out a bunch of 7-inch EPs and released their magnum opus, B-Thousand. Subscribe to follow along. <laughs> 